So two years ago, when we adopted our daughter Destiny, we realized that we would also be adopting her cat, M&M. And that gave us the result of having three girls and also three cats in the house. The really funny thing about the three cats is that they were very, very different to each other. So M&M, the younger cat, was very adventurous, very friendly, and was never afraid. And unfortunately, after a while of being with us in the neighborhood, he disappeared completely, and we never heard from him again. Our second cat, uh, Burrita Flycatcher, she was more like an outgoing cat, but she was also a little scared, and she was cautious. But also, unfortunately, she was hit by a car in a car accident a few months ago, and she's no longer with us. Our third cat, Fossy Paws, is the very, very scaredy cat, like really scaredy cat. The kind of scaredy cat that is still scared of some of us in the house after three years of living with us. That kind of scaredy cat. And he was the one to make it. He was the one to survive. So it really got me thinking. Obviously, this could be just a coincidence. But in a way, it got me thinking how when you are a cat and you have a predominant reptilian brain, you are going to be responding mostly from your fight or flight response. And that will work. That will work for cats millions of years ago, and it still works today. Um, similarly, human beings uh, with a much larger neocortex like we have, uh, we still can be very successful. We could be very successful after, until a few years ago, responding from our reptilian brain as well, and having our first response be fear. But the thing is, things are changing very radically. And in the last few years, we are evolving what I like to call our new digital brain. And this is like technology that is all around us, and it becomes like glue. Glue that brings us together. Glue that connects us, and it makes us form like a huge network. Imagine a massive planetary network of hyper-connected nodes. Well, it turns out that when you have a network, Networks, and especially these kind of massive networks, have certain properties that repeat themselves throughout economy, biology, etc. So in, particularly, in particular, one law of networks is that the value of a node is equivalent to the number of connections that that node has. So in our example, in our human beings, uh, as we are connected to all these other nodes or people, <laughs> Um, the value that we bring to the network is directly proportional to the amount of connections that we have, which means to the amount of people that we can reach out to and the amount of people that can reach out back to us. So that dramatically changes the rules of how we live our lives. And I recently have an opportunity to experiment this firsthand, experiment how the social networks work and the power that they have. So I'll tell you the story of what happened. A few days ago, I was driving north on Highway 15, trying to reach back, back home, and I saw those infamous lights <laughs> behind me. So I got pulled over. The officer gave me two infractions. The first infraction was for speeding. And yes, I was not aware that I was in a lower speed limit area than I was, and I swear, this is true. <laughs> The second infraction was a little more surprising even. The second infraction was to driving with a monitor inside of the driver. And I really didn't expect this. We didn't know as explorers, all of us, we didn't know that this was uh, something possible, that it was an infraction we could get. So at that moment, I had a choice. Uh, I had an officer that was giving me a very old law that in a way uh, was designed for a different purpose. It was designed for preventing that drivers would watch TV and movies while they drive, which makes sense, right? We all pray agree, makes total sense. But now it was being applied to a new technology that didn't, didn't even exist when the law was drawn. And at the same time, did the law ever conceive of a technology that maybe, just maybe, could come and actually fix a problem that a previous technology like cell phones were coming up with? So those were all my questions that I had, and I definitely had an option. I could just crawl back to my corner, feel bad about it, and be quiet. Or I could just go to 
networks like G+, Google+, and post it and ask the question to every, everybody that I know in the Glass Explorers community. So that's what I did. I posted it, and very fast I started to hear answers and see comments coming back. First were my friend, fellow explorers, and they were coming back to me saying, please, please, you gotta fight this in court. And they were even trying to raise money to help me <laughs> do it. Secondly, um, another friend was saying things like, but even if glass is off until you interact with it, with it does it still make an infraction? So people were like me, confused and pondering on the networks. And at the same time, the negative answers are starting to come. And some people were like, this crazy lady is driving on watching TV, okay? And of course, that's not what you do when you're driving with glass, clearly not. Um, and there were a blast of insults, which was very new for me, <laughs> and also legally and technically uh, misconceptions of all sorts. So things like, it is obstructing your sight. And I'm like, really? I've been recording you guys all this time. Glass was there, but I honestly completely forgot that it was. And it doesn't distract me or block me from having this awesome conversation with you guys. So the conversation got heated on the internet, okay? The parties were very opposed, like very, like some people completely hating it, some people loving me and defending me and attacking me, all happening at the same time. So at some point, it was getting late at night, and I realized I had to let it go. And I had, to, I had no control, and I just had to go to sleep and let haters be haters and lovers be lovers. <laughs> at the next morning when I woke up, <laughs> the next moment, morning when I woke up, I pretended to have my normal work day. But of course, that was not going to happen. My friends were reaching out, trying to support me, a friend, Jason, even made that, uh, that tag, Pre Cecilia, for the networks to share, and lawyers were coming to my help, all sorts of things. The, the phone was ringing nonstop with people that wanted to interview me, and you gotta realize all of this is very new for me, okay? I, I haven't had this before. So by night, I'm driving up to LA. <laughs> I'm driving up to LA, I had a UX design for glass, a workshop scheduled in LA, so I drive there, all the way there, the, the San Diego um, press was very ma mad at me that I was leaving San Diego and I was going to LA actually, but this was all scheduled, and they're interviewing me on the phone, I'm talking to friends, and I get there and I get greeted by these trucks from ABC, NBC, Fox News, and you get the idea. And the next morning it gets even more spread. And now, uh, yeah, I did even get the Colbert report, which that's the one thing I'm proud of. <laughs> so the next day it spread longer. My friends, I'm like, Cecilia, you made it to the BBC. <laughs> Cecilia, you made it to the Corriere della Sierra in Italia and all sorts of things like that. It was, it was fun too. But in the end, what is important is that the conversations that have to be had are being had. And that's what I consider very important. And really, it all started with just one post, sharing and being authentic and sharing what happened, being transparent, because that's what I preach. I preach about sharing and transparency, and that's what I had to do. In the end, what I'm going to tell you guys is what I tell myself and also what I tell my daughters, is um, you need to be authentic. You need to be transparent and to be vulnerable, because it all comes in the same bag. Uh, being a uh, scaredy cat doesn't work anymore. Uh, being scared like my abuelita, my grandma used to be, doesn't work anymore in this world. The world changed too much. And you can think of life pretty much like um, a game, okay? But in this game, you don't need to go out and collect all the coins. It's not about that, okay? You can leave coins for others. But what you want to do in this world and in this game in my opinion, is go after those bonus points that you get when you go into uncharted territories, when you experience new things, when you be, are brave enough to be yourself and to spread the word about what you believe in, when you reach out to others, when you connect. So the, the greatest risk of all in our time is to not take a risk. I really encourage you to connect and don't be a scary cat. Thank you.